Transfigurations by Michael Bishop. So first off, I want to show off a couple editions of this book that I have. I have the original U.S. hardback from Berkeley here, and it has some different artwork from the paperback, as you can see. And this came out from Berkeley, and there's a picture of Michael Bishop on the back. This artwork was done by Mike Hinge. And then I have the paperback. This is the first U.S. paperback version from Berkeley. And I'll go ahead and show this off. And I'll pause here on the, on the back if you want to read the synopsis on the back. And this book was... Well, look, first off, the artwork on this paperback was done by John Gambert. Gampert. And this book was copyright in 1979. But originally, there was a novella that Michael Bishop wrote called Death and Designation Among the Asadi. And that was copyright 1973, and it was published in The Worlds of If. Now, that novella, he basically, I believe, kept intact. He might have revised it a little bit. But then he kind of wrote the conclusion to that novella. So the novella here, you can see it's about 90 pages in. And if I just had to rate the novella, it's a five-star read for me. The novella was amazing. And then you're so intrigued by what he sets up in that novella. I think you you will definitely want to read the rest of the book. And there's some pros and cons overall to the book. I wouldn't give the book five stars. But like I said, the novella just hooks you right away. And I, I love the novella por portion of this book. Now, the, let's just get into the plot of this one. So when you start off in this book, there's a bit of a prologue. And... There's the narrator of this story, his name is Ben, and they are on a distant world in some point in the future. And Michael Bishop doesn't spend a lot of time going about how, you know, how the space travel works or anything like that. He talks a little bit about the original um, explorer who found the planet and found the Asadi, who this whole novel kind of revolves around them. They're the ones depicted on the cover here. And so our narrator, Ben, he's talking in the prologue and telling you, the reader, that one of his fellow anthropologists who were, there's a team of them on this little outpost in this small little city studying the Asadi. Um, one of his fellow anthropologists, whose name is Egon, he went off it to live with the Asadi for around four months and gather a bunch of information. He's the only one to have done this. And then he kind of, he was still hanging out with the anthropologist. He would come back and share the information. But then he disappeared. And it's been six years since anyone has seen him. He disappeared into the wilds of this planet. And the planet's called Boskveld. And... He, and he's been gone for six years as these anthropologists are still studying the Asadi. And then he finds out that this, this long-lost anthropologist, Egon, had a daughter that no one really knew about. And she's coming to the planet to kind of continue some of his research as well as try to locate her father. Now, Ben, he wasn't aware that Egon even had any relatives, and he had taken some of the works that that Egon had and him had kind of um, composed, and he had published it and sent it off to Earth and to everywhere else. And, you know, he had made some money off of this, and he's kind of thinking that maybe Egon's daughter, whose name is Elegy, that maybe she's coming to you know, try to maybe work some copyright infringement lawsuit against him or something. He's not sure what her true intentions are. So that's just the setup in the prologue. There's a little bit more that's, that's gone over in there. You get a lot more, you get a little bit more background and some things like that. And, and you kind of learn about the setting of the planet and, and a little bit more of the Asadi. But then after the prologue, you basically read 
the original novella that Bishop wrote in 73. And like I said, it's about a 90 page novella. And the novella is just basically from the point of view of Egon, the lost anthropologist. And his kind of firsthand account of everything that he went through. So he went out there and lived with them for four months. He's the only person to have done this. He kind of got um, welcomed into their tribe in a way. And by welcomed, it they um, once you're treated with indifference, then you're kind of welcomed into the tribe. And he learns a lot by living with them. He finds out there's these chieftains, and that's what's depicted here, this Asadi that's in the center. And there was some really mysterious things going on that these anthropologists were trying to uncover about the Asadi. One was, how do they, um, you know, eat and, and survive on this planet? There's, there's really no other animals besides them. Um, there's maybe a few insects. There's some plant life, but apparently it's not... Um, enough to nourish them. They're eating, you know, bark and some things like this. So there's this kind of mystery of how they survive. And then another mystery is there's apparently no way that they communicate. They don't do any kind of verbal communication, no grunting, no anything like that. They don't use sign language. And as Egon has been living with these Asadi, he starts unraveling some of these mysteries, even in this in this prologue. And so the the whole part of like what they eat isn't really unraveled at, at a point, but at this point in the book. But he starts to realize that they have these very interesting eyes. Everyone noticed this right away. They have these round kind of lens lenses protecting their eyes. And inside their eyes are like this kaleidoscope of multicolors and patterns that are swirling around. And he starts to realize that they'll stare at each other and that they're probably using these patterns to communicate with one another. And the, the, he starts unraveling some of these mysteries. He, he's this eccentric character. It's very witty and f there's some kind of funny parts it's, it's written really well, and I love that part of it. He also finds out that there is another creature on this planet. And if you look on our little chieftain's um, shoulder there, you see this kind of like bat-like creature. And it's, it's described really unique. Like th these bats don't have eyes either, but they're really aware of their surroundings. And they seem, they, he's only seen one of them ever, and they seem to always be riding around with this chieftain. And so that kind of opens up this whole other mystery. None of our other anthropologists have ever seen this creature. And you start to get the feeling that Egon is kind of losing his mind. He's kind of getting, he was already eccentric. He's kind of getting a little crazy. And our anthropologists aren't even really sure that this creature exists or if half of what Egon is writing in these um, you know, in, in his story here is true. Now, there is a lot of information given in this novella in the beginning. And so Bishop uses some data dumps in a, in a good way. He uses Egon's firsthand accounts, um, communication with the other anthropologists, uh, written correspondence. And then towards the end, Egon has this like... Um, um, voice recorder or this audio recorder on him and so he's he's picking up everything that's going on and that um, is transcribed in the book so <clears throat> even though there's a lot of data dumping going on in the beginning I think it's done really well in this format where it's kind of coming off in all of these different kinds of um, you know research and correspondence and everything so then after you get through that, you get into the main part of the book, and the book is just over 300 pages. So after you get through that novella, there's you know probably around 220 pages of kind of what I would call the meat of the story. And this is where Egon's daughter, Elegy, makes it to the planet and meets up with Ben, and they're gonna go out and you know, continue some research on the Asadi to try to unravel some more of these mysteries, as well as look for her father, who she believes is still alive. 
Now, she doesn't come alone. If you read the back of the book when I held it up, there's also this chimpanzee baboon hybrid that has some technological advancements done to him. He's, he's fairly intelligent. He's been made to look kind of like an Asadi, so he has these lenses over his eyes. He uses sign language to communicate with Elegy, and he can understand everything Elegy says, and he can communicate back to her in sign language. And he seems very intelligent. She can give him instructions, and he'll go out. He's very loyal to her. He is a very, very interesting character in this book, and he plays a key role in um, unraveling a lot of these mysteries and getting Elegy and Ben kind of incorporated into the tribe a little bit so they can figure out what's going on. So this this book, as these mysteries um, unravel, there is some horrific, um, very interesting things that, that happen. You get some things answered. A lot of the book is speculation amongst these anthropologists. Um, they come up with theories of what's been going on for maybe the 12 to 7 million years of evolution or possibly de-evolution on this planet with these Asadi creatures. Some of the information that they uncover will solve some of the mysteries and some of it will be kind of left open for interpretation. So there, there's that. So let's just kind of get into pros and cons. Pros, I, I loved um, Bishop's witty writing. I I got that in the first book I read from him, No Enemy But Time, and the especially the novella part of this book, it's just, it just had me kind of grinning the whole time I'm reading it, and it just had me captivated by this character and everything that he was doing. And like I said, he was eccentric, he was kind of going crazy. It was just awesome. Um, the writing after that, it, it got a little, you know, flowery at times, a little over the top with his writing style. Um, there could be some issues with um, the the overall plot. I, I It is confusing. I, I do feel like I need to reread this book at some point to fully try to understand everything that happened. But I think it's one of those books that you know, part of it is going to be left open to your interpretation. So you might have to be okay with that. Um, another big pro is just the, the plot of this. I've never read a science fiction book quite like this. Um, from what I understand, Bishop writes a lot of anthropological science fiction. No Enemy But Time was anthropological mixed with, sci with uh, time travel. And this is anthropological mixed with alien. So... He, he does his research. He's, he's very smart. You can, you can see the smartness coming off in his writing. He might use some big words a lot. I don't, I don't think he's using them to, to make them sound smart. I think he's just... I, I, I listened to an interview from, from Bishop, and he said he, he, he claims he's not that smart, but he um, compensated for, for that by doing extensive research. And it shows that you'll kind of pick up things in this book and want to research some little ideas and things he throws out. So his writing is great. He's definitely one of these authors. I think I want to read everything that he's ever written at some point. Now, as far as cons go, the middle part of this book, once you get past the novella, there's a big chunk, probably, you know, 25% of the way in to about 75% of the way in where it kind of drug for me. There's a lot of information given out. I read this, it, it was a slow read, that middle section, because I, w I wanted to understand everything that was going on. I did, I tried to understand it to the best of my ability, but I think there were still some things that I might have missed, but overall I think I got most of it. And then the story really picks up in the last maybe 25% where everything kind of starts getting wrapped up. Um, so the pacing it was a little off for me getting through the middle section. There's another, there, there's that thing I mentioned where not everything is going to get resolved, probably, unless I miss something. But that could be a con for some people because it's so complex and 
intriguing. It's it's one of those books where it's hard to make up your own ending for some of the things he puts in here. You know, and then there's some sort of horrific scenes of, of what's going on with, with these Asadi. Um, and so if you have a weak stomach, that could, that could be a con for some people, but it, it wasn't too bad. And it was just a few little sections that, um, were kind of where they're explaining some things going on with these Asadi. Uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler or anything, but you'll find out what a meat sibling is. Um, so yeah, Overall, I recommend this book, but I, you know, maybe some people will comment, people that have read more of Bishop's work than me. I maybe wouldn't start with this book from Bishop. It's, it, it was a little challenging. Um, I thought No Enemy But Time was um, probably a better place to start. I enjoyed that one, maybe overall a little bit more, but I, I think some of my lack of enjoyment on this is just some of the confusion and maybe on a second read this this could become I don't know it's it's right on the edge of becoming like an all-time favorite or just not sure what to think about it so it's one of those books I think that if you read this it'll stick with you for a while so another another uh, banger by by Bishop um, like I said, I, I'm, I think the next book I'm going to read by him is called A Little Knowledge, and I think that one has kind of a religious tone to it. He's also done a lot of research and, and written some books, um, some science fiction with a religious flair. So I think that'll be the next one I read from Bishop. Um, but next up, I'm reading The Final Blackout, Blackout by L. Ron Hubbard. This is a pretty short book. I should be able to finish this by the end of the month. So just... Just look for that video coming out next. And once again, thanks for watching.